All right, so I'm Matt Ellison. I'm co-founder and CEO of Arroyo Networks. We're a recent startup um, out of Michigan, and we're basing our first product, which is similar to what uh, Tensor's doing, but we're doing it uh, kind of in Kubernetes. So we're using a lot of the VPP, and of course, um, we've been kind of involved with the NSM uh, working group going on, and I'm gonna explain a little more. It's gonna be a little more high detail about what we're doing. Um, not so much in the nitty gritty, but um, you know, we we're excited to be here and explain exactly what we're doing with Kubernetes. And so if you're not aware, Michigan is uh, way over there, so quite a ways away from here. So actually, I think it's pretty much past my bedtime at this point, but uh, the problem is we're also in the UP of Michigan, so I might sound like a Canadian, and um, in a little place called Houghton, Michigan. So uh, I think we get the record snowfall uh, in the US, I believe so, or very close to. So um, I think I cleared about three feet of snow from my driveway before I left. So the problem we're trying to solve for, um, for Arroyo Networks is really that we look at statistics for small businesses and we're seeing that really only 14% of them are reporting that they feel safe, right? So um, w what we've been hearing since basically 2009, probably earlier, is that the cloud's gonna save us. Right, don't worry, and basically everyone's been saying this. But the problem is this statistic came from 2017, right? So if we look at 2009, 2017, what's going on, right? Things obviously aren't improving. So we set out to change this, right, for small and medium-sized businesses, and so we came up with this idea of a service called Inflow. Now this is kind of all the marketing jargon that we've, we've been putting together, but from a technical perspective, we wanted something that was gonna be flexible, affordable, secure, and our target market's more of the MSPs um, and service providers. So, uh, you know, flexible, we wanted to be able to toggle network functions um, on and off. We wanted something that's affordable, so we're looking at replacing hardware with software as much as possible. Uh, secure, so secure to follow Snuggle legacy protocols. Um, since we're running in Kubernetes and kind of in our own cloud, we can finally apply compute and storage intensive operations that small and medium-sized businesses generally can't afford. Um, and for MSPs, they just kind of want a light version of a sim. So when we first set out to do this, we kind of had this idea of developing um, something that looked like this. This was just kind of our concept, right? We're like, hey, it would be awesome if we were in the cloud, kind of had this mesh of something um, where we could process network traffic and then tunnel it back, right? But how? Right, we wanted to figure out a way to do this. So we started looking at traditional SDN things, um, Onos, Open Daylight, decided eh, not a super great fit for cloud native. Um, and at the end of the day, we didn't really care about the networking setup, we just wanna look at packets. So then we were looking at traditional NFE, right? VMs, OpenStack, let's see what we can do there. Um, so we wanted something lighter than VMs. And sorry if anyone's an OpenStack fan, but when I see that, I say hell no. So uh, we wanted to try something different. So we said, well, Kubernetes, right? We've been using it for our web apps. Um, it's kind of the latest buzz, so what can we do there? And so what it really boiled down to is that we wanted to use Kubernetes to do at layer three what Kubernetes has been doing for layer seven, right? All this scheduling, scaling, replication, self-healing, all these policies and access control, right? But apply that to actual packets as the payload, not um, you know, your HTTP or whatever. So we kind of set out um, starting to develop a different paradigm for um, NFV and the different ways we apply network functions. And so we came up with this concept called a stage, which is basically a Kubernetes pod. So this is a collection of network functions. And what we do is we receive a packet from basically the previous stage uh, through MIF, which is orchestrated through NSM. We send it down to the network functions in parallel. They basically just say, yes, it's good. And we forward it on to the next stage. And likewise, if one of the NFs say it's no good, we don't forward it on. So um, in this scenario, an NF um, example would be a single firewall rule, right? So something that's just looking for port, you know, a certain port. You know, it's not just all firewall rules. We're trying to break it down very granularly so that um, we're a little more in that cloud native space. So then we moved on from having just our stages and we developed what was called a pipeline. And again, um, 
these are basically a series of stages that are connected via network service mesh. And basically, how we started this off was each one of our clients connected to our system basically got a pipeline that ran through a series of network functions. So in between, network service mesh connection, network service mesh connects all the stages in the pipeline via VPP. Um, if it's on the same node, it's a MIF, uh, otherwise it's, it's a VXLAN. So what our actual platform looks like from the top level um, is we basically created a strong swan um, Ike ingress for Kubernetes. And so what we do is we use um, strong swan with VTIs, and um, you know, so we're basically using IPsec routing uh, tunnels, and so we're able to move that VTI directly into the first um, stages network namespace. Right, so a packet comes in on a specific IPsec tunnel and it goes directly into the first container in the first, um, in the first stage. And then on the back end we use um, VPP to NAT it out. Uh, right now we're using TAPI2 in the last stages network namespace to egress the packet back out to the internet. And that's where we apply NAT and um, any of our uh, additional edge functions. But basically we decided this wasn't good enough, right? This still wasn't kind of uh, as cloud native as we wanted it to be. So we took it one step further, right? So the problem with this is, is if each customer has a pipeline, that's still, you know, you're still just kind of funneling, you know, a customer through one piece of software, or, you know, one stack, right? It's not, it doesn't move around, it doesn't have replicas, it doesn't scale. So what we did is instead of putting the VTI directly into the first um, container, is we created a container that sits on top of the ingress and basically does flow hashing, you know, or a type of RSS scaling, I guess you could talk, you know, say, um, which basically then will, uh, you know, send out different flows to different replicas of the pipeline. So at this point, we can scale up a new replica, bring up a new pipeline, which is running all the different network functions we want, and we scale our replicas and we scale our hashing function to the number of replicas we're running. And the nice thing about using NSM is that it automatically wires it up for us. And for all we know, it's uh, on a different node, right? So at this point, it's just kind of running in our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we try to do some things with locality to make sure things are on the same node, but uh, at the same time, the nice thing about this is if one node goes down, all this pops up on another node, or if you know we need some more heavy lifting, we can bring it up and see where it goes. So our future work with um, FIDO and kind of the VPP stuff we want to do is, um, you know, right now the problem is we're we're really having to run with two NICs, right? So we have one that's being controlled by Strong Swan. Um, which is still using uh, the kernel networking. And then on the back end, you know, we're doing STN mode with ContVPP. So ideally what we want to do is just make this entire thing uh, driven by VPP, right? So obviously um, there's probably a lot more that needs to go into looking at the IPsec implementation of VPP, if you're familiar with that. Um, you know, it's basically a proof of concept. So we're going to be looking at moving forward, seeing if we can improve that. Um, get it a little more uh, production ready, and then we're going to be looking at different things like OpenVPN and WireGuard implementations. Thank you. Any questions? I do not have a demo. Any demos? I do not have a demo. You have this stuff in the cloud. I know. Is that demo soon. online? Soon. How soon? We're launching this next month. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I think you have a, still a couple of minutes. Any other questions? A um, couple of things. So is all this living in public clouds then? 
Yeah, so the, basically what we're doing is we're doing um, next generation firewall as a service. So we're running this completely in our own infrastructure. So the, the reason why uh, we're doing it that way is we're wanting to bring NFV and, and newer networking technologies to businesses where it was fiscally you know, incapable of doing so in the past, right? So if you're a small to medium-sized business, it probably doesn't make sense for, from a budgetary standpoint to um, deploy something more than maybe a Cisco ASA or something that's you know, kind of starting to get outdated. So uh, everything is, is one service, one, um, you know, we, we're deploying this as a SaaS model. So basically someone logs in, they deploy a gateway, and we give them a, an IPsec endpoint to connect to from their site or sites or cloud or AWS, wherever they're at, and then uh, they can just kind of toggle new um, services on and off as they need. Okay, so the follow-up is, I'm just curious, I'm one of the few non-vendors in here, and as a service provider representative, how would that fit into my business model? So the managed service providers we've talked to to this point, um, they're struggling to offer higher levels of security for their small businesses because they're typically capital um, intensive, right? So, you know, if they're trying to buy some piece of uh, equipment, it's usually out of their budget. And we've talked to a lot of MSPs who are managing smaller companies. And of course, I'm from the Midwest. It might be a little different out here or wherever you're from. But back in the Midwest, there's a lot of difficulty trying to convince these businesses that they should find the security, right? They're still, they still kind of have this uh, reactive approach, right? So they just kind of cross their fingers and wait for something to happen, which we don't want them to do. We want them to be proactive about security. So, um, you know, so we're trying to give them a cheaper alternative solution that's really easy for the managed service provider to maintain. So we give them one interface where they can manage all of their clients, all of their sites. They can see everything from one standpoint. Um, you know, we're building kind of a light version of a sim into it so they can see different events across all their sites and start looking at different correlations there. Um, so you know, it, it's really bringing some of these more advanced features down to a, a price point that's palatable by the, the smaller and medium-sized businesses with delicate budgets. So I have one more question. Yeah. <clears throat> it's about security. Sure. So uh, this is a second uh, talk about security. And um, uh, so I'm, I, I work for a vendor, or the vendor pays me money, but I actually run open source benchmarking lab. And uh, as I said on the, on the slides, representing the team is we like breaking things. Mm -hmm. So going forward, apart from just benchmarking uh, and breaking, trying to come close to the physical limits, we're going to explore one more thing. And this is in the context of VNF and CNF. VNFs is hard, are hard to break, especially if it's a closed system, right? CNFs, <clears throat> so um, the question is, um, are you doing anything specifically because all of those solutions run one single fact that nobody can break into your container? Right. So is there any, any thoughts you can share about securing those containers because the CNF versus VNF or NVNF conversations happening now in, uh, in this forum, in this conference. Mm -hmm. There'll be more and more talks, similar to what Tyler, me, and, and others uh, talked about. Yeah. And, I wonder, and I wonder if anybody is actually looking at securing those containers properly, because today they are so-so, as far as I can tell. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, that's a great question um, slash kind of open area, I think, in this industry right now, right? Because um, there's always been a debate about how secure are you know, Linux containers, right? How you know, isolated are they truly? And I know there's been a lot of work done, and I see there's a lot of interesting talks coming up this week. Um, you know, so we're, we're looking into different things like um, you know, host-based anomaly detection to be able to sandbox different containers if we notice things are not looking correct. Um, but again, that's something as a community, I think we're just gonna have to keep actively applying new measures to and making sure that we're hardening um, you know, these sort of systems as they become more popular because otherwise it, it, it will just be open season. Yeah, I would encourage the industry to go the way that crypto went. Open source everything. Mm -hmm. Give everything to the inspection and, uh, and make sure that the community works together to harden this baseline foundational technology like they did in the past with the other internet technologies so that we can actually arrive to something that is, it hasn't got Trojan houses and all sorts of you know, back doors and holes and whatever. That would be really, really cool. And uh, with, with performance that the CNF technology is promising and the security thing being addressed, it would be really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jim. Well, yeah, we're good.
I, I have two questions. Yeah. Um, one of them is, you know, Arroyo is Spanish, and how does a guy from far northern Michigan come <laughs> up with Arroyo for? Um, that's a good question, and that's one I get from just about everyone. So, uh, yeah, when I when people hear the company name up in Michigan, they're like, uh, you know, what is that word, yeah. right? I they know what it is. What I'm it not is, <laughs> right. So I yeah. Um, so basically, uh, with networking being kind of uh, has a lot of correlation to water terms, streams, and stuff okay. like that. So uh, it was one of those moments where we were looking for a name for a company and kind of going through the thesaurus and was like, oh, that's a pretty cool name and. I, I have I had heard of it before, but uh, you know, there, there's a Tex-Mex restaurant in Austin named El Arroyo, so you know, oh. very aware. The other is a sort of more uh, interesting. Um, you mentioned WireGuard and OpenVPN, and I'm. Mm -hmm. We've also thought about doing one of those at least. Um, and are you interested in collaborating on that, or do you want to keep it closed? Um, no, we would definitely be open to collaborating. Um, again, when it comes to stuff like uh, VPN implementations, that's the sort of thing I don't want to do in the dark because that's easy to screw up and then get hammered on. <laughs> Maybe is anyone else? Okay. Yeah. So a friend, a dear friend of mine, asked me for a favor. So I'm going to ask it in the public, as he seems to be a bit shy. How do you like Mammoth? Uh, we can talk later. <laughs> Excellent. No, it's, the, the performance is great. You know, I come from, well, my background a little bit. Um, so I, I started my career um, before DPDK was really a thing or was really publicized, trying to build software equivalents of Ixia for a previous employer. Um, so I, you know, I lived in a lot of the kernel networking space and looking at different user space options. Um, so. Honestly, anything that improves performance, I'm all for. Uh, but um, I think we, we've had some challenges being a newcomer to BPP in general, I think, uh, just with different documentation and stuff like that. But you know, it's getting better, so I'm really happy. No, th thanks, for, thanks for openness, <clears throat> because I believe a friend of mine did uh, try to do his best to actually make uh, security the number one priority. Performance was, funnily enough, secondary. And there is a talk delivered at KubeCon EU that uh, goes into the detail. But uh, in terms of the documentation and welcoming uh, you in the community, uh, please just telling us um, on and on and on on how can we do better. It's, uh, you know, it's hard work, but uh, we all aspire to the better. I was going to say, Thank no you. one likes to write documentation, so I don't blame you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you.